Okay, so I just started with a clone stamp layer. And I just used it to get rid of this unsightly piece of straw that was in one of my references. And so if I turn off every other layer except for the background and the clone stamp layer, this is why this is still compositing and not painting. Because we are using pixels from other layers and just painting them where we want. We're not painting our own pixels. But you can see that little mask helps cover up what I don't want. And then I can always, I'm still at 100% with that clone stamp tool, but it's a powerful layer and tool. I can go to this shadow and I can kind of even out the shadow of the clone stamp. I can steal it from here, holding down option, fill that in here a little bit, and I'm using my pressure sensitive tablet. So I can kind of carve it up the way I want. Same thing with, there's a big chunk missing from the, um, the feather there. So I don't want to accidentally select the gray. So what I'm going to do is turn off that gray background and then I'm going to add a little bit of that feather back with by stealing from the feather, let's say from here. It's a good feather, maybe from here. And it will kind of give me a little ghost of what that might look like. And then I just kind of paint it in. I don't need to worry about destroying the pixels where I'm painting it because this is all in a layer on top. Now, if you do clone stamp within a layer that already has pixels, you are in danger of wiping out those pixels. So that's why I like to do it this way. Because then I can just go on that clone stamp layer and I can just erase away and blend. So if I want more shadow on those feathers, same thing, clone stamp, option. It travels with me. So when I want to continue that shadow, I need to re-hit option. Making some big opaque moves here in this clone stamp layer, because then I can just use my eraser and transition them, soft edged. So that looks better than without it. So clone stamp is a really powerful tool. Once you know how to composite otherwise, you can just build textures in that come from your own layers and you can work with it and then you can erase it away. Now I've been using clone stamp just at 100% and then erasing away, which is a nice controllable way to work with it. You can also use clone stamp at a different opacity. So I'll show you that. If I know that I want some of these scales to be up here because they're nice and sharp, around the eye, I can use my clone stamp layer, but I can use it at, let's say, a 30% or so opacity. Select here, and then start transitioning it in. And then the more I hit it, the more opaque it will be. What's nice about that is I can layer up the opacities. So I don't always need to clone stamp the exact same selection. And that will give it some softness too. So it's a nice mix of these different textures now together. Or if I want to bring some of this fur texture or feather texture back behind it because it's a little too bright, clone stamp at a low opacity can do that beautifully. Same thing for the shadows underneath the head, you can just do them at a low opacity, kind of take, take down edges that feel too strong, or build back shadows that I think should be stronger. And of course, I can then erase away 
and blend with my eraser. I want more of these feathers because no one composites just perfectly everywhere. There's going to be little edges you need to, to fix and address. So this color is very purple. There's really not a lot of purple other places. So I could take some of this texture. It's from the wing, but I can just low opacity clone stamp, put that texture on top. And that helps blend those colors together. And where I think I need it a little bit more, I can do it a few more times. And I can always erase away if I did too much. If I want more of this softness on the back, I can just clone stamp it in from these soft textures somewhere else in my creature. And then I can erase it away in a more targeted way. And that will soften it. Okay, but then you might worry, let me turn on that background, that your clone stamp gives you edges that then you can't control, right, that aren't nicely cut out anymore. But here's the beauty of having those combined layers underneath. All I have to do is go to the combined layer, select with the magic wand the empty space behind it, right, and then I can take that selection and use my eraser and trim it. I can see where I've added with clone stamp and where I've left off. And I'm going to do myself a little favor. You see all of these things. Now I'm ready to do like the final polishing of the car, right? And treat all the edges all together. So the last step, once you've done all your clone stamping on your clone stamp layer, I'm going to do a little bit more in here, is we're going to treat the outside. I want to maybe take some of that feather texture, put it in here, maybe a little bit here, no, too much. Strong. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my background again. And then I'm going to hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. And now I have a red layer because Clone Stamp was my red layer before. And when I make a duplicate based on that with everything underneath it, now this is everything in one layer. And that wasn't strong enough, so I need to take this chunk. This is, well, that's not good. <laughs> I'm going to take this chunk that comes from my clone stamp layer, which was done at too low an opacity, and I'm going to duplicate it many times over until it's opaque like the rest of my feather. There we go. And then I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to merge that into the clone stamp layer. So I hold down shift and then layer merge layers or command E. This is still my clone stamp layer. I'm going to name it that, and then mark it red. And then I'll show you how to do that combined layer again. So if I just see what my clone stamp is doing, it's just doing that. If I turn on the background so you can see it, it's just filling in little gaps. But they go over the top of my, my dodged and burned creature, right? 
and they really help it to fill out. Okay, now I, I turn all of that on. And I turn off the background and I go to my top clone stamp layer and I hold down option and say layer merge visible. And then I can turn off these other layers. And now I have one that I can clean up fully and see if there's anything missing. And the one thing I see that's a bit of a problem are all these little blues on the tail just from the magic wand. So if I uncheck contiguous on my magic wand, I can get all those blues and I can just hit delete. And that will give me a really sharp edge. So what's better is also to hit select and mask. And with that little feather, you can see all the blues that are gonna get deleted. And a lot of them are interiors. So, what I do instead is I'll select just those blues, like I did before. Come on, give me those blues. There we go. And then I do select and mask. And instead of hitting delete and getting rid of them everywhere, I'm going to use my tools. Make a little bit stronger. And I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity. To erase them. So to see it up close, this is what's going on. And because it's feathered, it's pretty good. It's going to get the biggest ones, biggest chunks. It's kind of halo of blue. Okay, now I'm going to do my check. I like the blue there. I'm fine with it there. Now I'm going to do a contiguous around the whole thing. The outside of my creature, right? And then I'm going to do refine and or select and mask. Let it be just a slight feather. And then this will bite away at all the edges a little bit by hitting delete. So if there's any kind of stray fragments out there, it will hit them. And then I can decide, well, do I want that little edge on the wings, or should I select all of those, at least that wing, see if it's on the other wing. This is just the final cleaning up. And now, same thing, select and mask, OK, and I can just delete it. And it should softly take it down. And maybe there are tiny little adjustments I need to make. It's all in one combined layer now, where I can trim it. Little places where I can trim it. But this is like uh, the finished paint job and waxing of your car that you've built so carefully. And then there are little things like this. On this combined layer, I can do my final dodge and burns. So in this case, I'm going to burn the highlights. And I'm going to do it in a pretty targeted way at a pretty high exposure. So I just want to knock these highlights down, like that blue should not be so blue 